uh, network that's gone through accreditation. And so they, the corporate entity, are accredited by us, and they have to be reevaluated on a regular basis, just like our hospitals do. And part of their agreement with us is that they will get all of their, all the, the hospitals that they buy will also go through AHA accreditation for the individual hospitals, whether it be a general practice or a specialty hospital. So um, there's really nothing negative about it. All of it's really, really, really great. And um, uh, the leadership is just really, they're good people. It's a, it's, a, it's a corporation run by really good people. And it's neat to see the hospitals getting incorporated into that umbrella and into the AHA family. So we're really excited about it. Yeah, I was, I'm really excited too. It was a neat process. How, because I know you worked with Petwell to kind of create the standards. So how does that work when the entity that's creating the standards is also going to be the entity that's first accredited by those standards? Yeah, well, they, they had really tough, they had really tough perspectives of what they expected. Um, they had really, they had really high expectations of what they want other corporations to also adhere to. So, if we suggested something, usually they would come back wanting more. And we had um, so, the Petwell was only one of the oh, 10, 15 people that were involved in the actual creation of the standards. So oh, they could offer up like, hey, this is this is what we're doing, and um, and you know, what do you guys think of that? Like we have X, Y sort of HR policy, or this is what we do with our um, finances, this is how we manage our financial documents, for example. Um, and, and what do you guys think? And most of the time we were saying, wow, that's really fancy and impressive and going above and beyond. So we would have the other people on the board, on the, on the task force, they, would, they all wrote their own. Um, standards, as did the the leadership at Petwell, but it was all voted on as a task force, and then it was sent to a separate task force, and that task force in and of itself, all they do is um, read and review standards, standards within the whole, all of AHA, so for general practices and specialty hospitals, and then now for corporate accreditation, and then those standards also, after they went through that committee, they, all, they also went to the board of directors, so <clears throat> So you ended up having so many eyeballs on it that it wasn't just a, it was far from and nothing at all, like just a rubber stamp from one corporation saying, this is what we think all hospitals should look like, even though, and lowballing the standards and having mm -hmm. it really easy to achieve. None of this stuff was easy. Um, and I was impressed that there, A, a lot of them they were already doing, and the one, and B, the ones they weren't doing, they're like, yeah, we should start doing that. That's awesome. Yeah, I, it's, it was a proud moment when we, because they sent an email around talking about it, and then I had uh, had a few discussions, uh, and it, I think it's a really neat concept. I especially like that, you know, I think you said when they first apply, it's 90% of their clinics need to be AHA accredited, and then within 18 months, 100%. And I actually, I was a, a, a kind of stand-in medical director for one of the clinics we acquired, and it was the first time I actually got to start from no AHA accreditation to AHA accreditation. And I decided we need to make a show kind of like uh, Gordon Ramsay's the 24 hour one where like you go into a clinic that's not AHA accredited, you know, you can update everything and then you make the, it would have to be more than 24 hours and you'd have to make like the computer typing really more exciting than it is, <laughs> but, <Right. laughs> you know, but you go in and you, you organize it and you, but that was a lot of fun because uh, Independent Hill, which is my primary clinic, we have our, our reaccreditation tomorrow actually, what? and it's our 26th year. So it was neat going from, you know, that practice to one that we were just starting and, I, I, I really like AHA. I don't know if, if you listen to any of my podcasts, you should listen to the one called, oh yeah, AHA. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like that you guys are moving more towards the digital protocols because uh -huh. A, from my like in or attentive OCD perspective, each category gets its own folder. And then within the protocol, you can hyperlink and it's just so anal and retentive organized and very pretty. Uh, I think I, I bugged our, our creditor, because I was like, you're going to weep when you see it. And when she sat down to look at it, I put a little box of tissues next to her, just in case. <laughs> but it's neat to know that you're applying those, 
because like you said, you're not telling us how to practice medicine. You're just the things that we don't normally need to think about. Like you want negative pressure in your ISO ward, you know, like that's not something that every veterinarian needs to worry about. But if you know that it's something that's going to help your practice, I just, I, I really admire AHA and, and I, I really am so honored that you took the time to, to talk with me and it'd be my first official, official interview. <laughs> well, it, it's, um, it's, it's such, it's always just a blessing to be able to chat with our members um, because we exist seriously to serve you guys. Like that is everyone who works for us has a servant mentality. And so when you actually get to see the person that you're serving and creating things for, um, it's really, it's an honor. So um, it, it's just, it's been wonderful to, to spend time with you. And um, thank you for being brave and starting a podcast and, and reaching out um, and just keep doing that. Cause well, you thanks. just keep trying stuff and trying stuff and people are gonna keep saying yes, yes, yes. And you never know where it's gonna take you. Hopefully yeah. not to the brink of insanity, which is where it took me, but um, <laughs> you can stay safe. <laughs> well, hopefully I'll have my own Al Roker kitten moment at <laughs> one point in my life. <laughs> I guarantee you will. <laughs> well, Dr. Lewinzer, thank you so much. Thank you for, for spending time with me and for and for working on this. It's awesome. Oh, sure. Well, thank you. And when I start the real world veterinary style, I'll let you know. Yeah, you please do. Please do. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'll see you at Connexity. I think that about wraps it up. As always, thank you for listening to this installment of Vetsplaining. I hope you enjoyed your time with me and ideally learned at least one new thing for the day. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics, feel free to leave a comment below or email info at independenthillvet.com and put podcast topic or podcast comment in the subject line. Until next time.